Okay, guys. Okay. So as Sean was saying, um, tonight is going to be about game theory, right? And in trading, why do we need to know about game theory? Well, because we're playing against other people, right? In chess, you can't just learn the rules. You have to understand your opponent, right? You got to think about what he is thinking or even, even one step further, right? So Aaron Brown, one of my favorite quants, he says, level one thinking is thinking about the cards you have. And he's a poker player as well. Yeah. And he, so he worked at AQR as a risk manager, AKA the, portfolio, the, the, the manager of the portfolio managers. So he says, level one thinking is thinking about the cards you have. That is 99% of people, right? That is not people thinking about their psychology, thinking about themselves, okay? That is, that is level one thinking. Level two thinking is thinking about what the opponent has, okay? So you're thinking, well, how would this guy play his cards? Right, so for example, Sean's look, imagine we're not thinking about the math in poker, we're just talking about you know, psychology you know, against one another. Sean might be thinking, well, look at Jordan, he's sweating. I wonder what he has there. Right, he starts playing my cards. So that's level two thinking. Level three thinking is what does the guy think I have? So level one is the cards that I have. Level two is what does Sean have? Level three is what does Sean think I have? Okay, and this is about game theory. Right. This is about when you're playing with someone else, you have to be, you have to have a different, you have to have a, a better strategy than them. You have mm -hmm. to have a winning strategy. So, okay. So, okay. You want to switch over here? Yeah. So we're going to play a game, yeah. right? Let's give it a shot. Let's play a game. And um, so guys, for the answers to the question that we're going to be posing you, uh, send me your answer as a DM on discord. Yeah. I'm going to take note of everyone's answers. We don't want people sharing answers in the chat here. Send it to me on discord. Um, Russ 69. That's a pretty good guess already, man. I assume that's your guess, uh, for the thing. Not bad. Um, but send me it on discord. We're going to walk you through the structure of the game right now. And then, uh, we'll get to it. And guys really think about your answer because we're going to be bucking you guys off and we want you to explain yeah. why you chose that answer. So expect to be able to explain your answer. So, exactly. Uh, you guys can actually come on and chat with us about your answer, or you can type it into the chat, but be ready to share it. Yeah. Be ready to share it. Okay. And then don't worry guys, there's only learning here. So don't be embarrassed. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna walk through this game. So there is 14 people on the slide. Okay, there's 14 people on the slide. Now I want you guys to pick a number from one to 100, and it has to be a full number. So I'm gonna run through this twice, okay? So we all understand. Pick a number from one to 100, full number. And by the way, guys, this is going, send, please send the number to Sean on Discord. Please do not put it in the, in the chat. Secondly, we will calculate the average of all the numbers. Okay, so don't pick a number yet. Let me, let me get through all this and you guys can choose. We are gonna calculate the average of all the numbers. Okay, the person who wins the game is the person that gets closest to two thirds times the average. Okay, so I'll give you an example right here. Example, we have three players and they choose 30, 50, and 20. So that is equal to 90 divided by three. So the average of these numbers is 30. Two thirds of 30 is 20. So whoever got closest to 20 wins. So I'm gonna go through one more time. Choose a full number, a whole number between one and 100. We're gonna calculate the average of those numbers Okay. And the person whose number is closest to two thirds, the average wins. So we're going to do one more time. Example, we have three players. The three players choose 30, 50, and 20. That's 90. We divide that by three to get the average. So the average of these numbers was 30. We take two thirds of that number and whoever was closest wins. So the number, whoever was closest to the number 20, wins okay so i want you guys to take a second here take a minute okay we will give it a minute here sean just mm -hmm. and we, we always cut that up for, for yeah. recording and there are 14 people on here right now yeah 14 people what is who who's going to get closest to this number i think we got enough here right yeah okay we're gonna we're gonna move ahead with this game here okay so how do you want to approach this so we want to just pick someone to, to explain their answer yeah, I, think, I think we should bucket it so okay how many people chose above 50 Okay, Nobody, so, one person chose 50. One, uh, Renato. So Renato, so we got, well, well Russ, did, Russ did as well. Okay, yeah. So, so Russ and Renato chose greater than 50. 
So, so a few people are greater than two. So yeah, so two people greater than 50. So um, uh, can, what, can you guys explain why you chose uh, the worth the number 50? <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh. What's <laughs> up? How you doing, man? How's it going? Good, good, really really good. good. So Show me the math. I want to see the math. Let's, let's hear you. So what, what, what was your math, man? What were you doing to come up with your answer of uh, 69? Well, I was writing out the average and then I put equals X times two thirds and I was going to see if there was some type of like. But how are you picking weird, your numbers on the top? Weird trickery. I was just guessing random numbers because really any, any, there's any random. Uh, fair, fair. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Fair. That's so, fair. Yeah. So maybe like two thirds of, let's say like, like a hundred would be around 66, 69. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's fair. That's it. That's uh, <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> good answer, man. It's a good answer. It's a good answer. It's a good answer. Let's get Neil. Let's get Neil in on him. He, well, well, Neil we'll might come up Neil. next, man. He yeah. might come up next. So actually we should do, we'll, we'll do Neil next here. Cause he's yeah. doing, he did 33. Okay. So let's have, you know, thanks a lot, by the way. Uh, Russ, thanks for coming on, man. We're going to, we're going to kick you off now though. <laughs> 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 all right, man, all right. Yeah, I changed back to what that be. Okay, Neil, you're coming on, man. Okay, so I'm inviting you right now. So the next bucket is close to 33, you know, between let's say 30 and to 49, right? And how many guys we got there? And in that group, we have two, three, four, five, five people. Five people picked between 30 and 49. Okay, Neil, Neil, you're up, buddy. Let's chat. So Neil chose 33. What's up? Neil, what's up, man? Why are you confused? Explain to us. <laughs> Why'd you pick 33? I don't know. I just assumed if everyone picked a number, the average would be 50. 50 times two thirds is 33. Good logic. Okay. So if I like I, how you're if thinking. Everyone picked randomly, then it would be average would be 50. Right, so if everyone chose randomly, Neil's saying the average would be 50, and then uh, you know um, two thirds of 50 is 33. I originally just I thought I assumed the average would be higher than 50 for some reason. Yeah. Okay, what? And that's why I got 40 at first. Yeah. But. This is logical, right? This is logical. Everyone chose um, at random, then it would be 33 percent of 50. Now, question for you, Neil. Do you think? The PA members are random generators. No, that's why. That's why I originally thought sixty. I thought it'd be higher. But. Gotcha. Okay, but if everyone, so think about like this, Neil. Right? Actually, before I even explain it, maybe we'll go one. We'll go one level further. Yeah, we'll go one level further. Okay. If everyone thought that, then what? <laughs> right. So Neil, now you're thinking. Now you're thinking. Right. So this would be the first level. The first level of of thinking. Right. Is well, everybody would you know would think. It would, be, would be random where they would just pick randomly. So I'm going to go 33% uh, or 66% of, um, of 50, right? But remember, we're, no one here is, is a random generator, right? We're all trying to win at a game. So right. let's, go, let, let's go to the next level. So Neil, thanks for coming on, buddy. Oh, uh, yep. what, what's your answer here? Do you want to type it? Yeah. Just so that, okay. Okay. Well, I already saw the data. It's not fair, but I know. Yeah, okay. Um, I think you might have even gone a little too high. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So answer. Neil, thank you, sir. We're gonna go one. We're gonna go one level yeah. lower. We're gonna go. So we have another bucket. We'll call it people who picked uh, twenty and twenty-nine. Was that the only one who did thirty? Nope. So you got five. Let's, people let's do a uh, five. Uh, uh, in your bucket. Let's okay. do fifteen to twenty-nine. Fifteen. Yeah. Okay. All the people there. There is one. Fifteen to twenty-nine. One. Two. Three, four. Four. Okay. Okay, we got a few guys who picked that. Dan, Kyle. Um, who, wants to, who wants to come on and chat? Steve. Who wants to come on and chat? A lot of people. Hey, who wants to come on and chat? Explain Steven, everything. you want to come chat? All right, man. I'm going to invite you right now. Explain the reasoning. Oh, Neil, get the hell out of here, man. <laughs> oh, excuse me. hanging around for. <laughs> Hey, Neil, by the way, man, I love the IG post. Oh, oh yeah. That was great. I'm sure Sean was awesome, I, 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 I loved it. I absolutely Amazing. loved it. Okay, Steve. Hey. 
Hey. So Steve's answer was 21. 21. How'd you come to this number, Ben? Uh, um, okay. So 21. So um, average is 50. Um, assuming people are using first level thinking, we should get the number that Neil said at 32. Uh, I'm going to assume that people, some of our guys are smart and have picked 32. That would skew the average down further. Um, at the same time, I kind of felt like it couldn't get too low because we might have a few random high numbers. Um, and that would kind of bring up our average a lot more. So I kind of went 21. Amazing. Um, That's good that shit. Is, that is good shit, man. That's really good. That's really good thinking. So he said, well, you know what? Most of the people at Predicting Alpha are pretty intelligent. They're going to choose probably what Neil chose, right? They're going to go, you know, 33% of, or 66% of 50. So Steve said, well, I'm going to go basically 66% of that. Right? If everyone chose 50, if everyone chose uh, what Neil did, right? which would be 33, then 66% of 33 is 20, right? 21, right? And, and so that's why Steve said, right? 21. So good answer. That's, that's great level thinking. That's really good. And we're gonna get into, we're, we're gonna touch more about that as the live goes on. We're gonna go one, we're gonna go one, so one more category, which is the people who said that it's less than 15. And in that category is myself, Jordan, Tico, Koa picked it. And Andres, Andres picked seven. And Very good, man. And Kyle hit, fifth, Kyle, hit, Kyle hit 15. So Kyle was almost there. But we're, 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 we're gonna calculate the average of all of this, of all the numbers, and we're gonna see who the winner is, okay? Yeah. So here, you wanna- let, 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 Let's actually grab a- Okay, so- want, So Tico, Kyle, or Andres, if you guys wanna come on. Yeah, I'm gonna, while you, while you have a look at that, I'm gonna calculate out what it is. Okay, perfect. You want to count how many players we have there, dude? Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. Uh, Kyle, Andres, and Tico, anyone? Okay, Koa said he'll speak. Okay, let's get him on here. My man, Koa. Hey, hey buddy. Jordan, what was your name? How many people were there again? 15? Yeah. Hello? Well, can you see me? Yeah, I can't see you, but I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I thought you guys would pick lower numbers. <laughs> How come? Well, because what I did is 100, two thirds is 66, and then two thirds of 66 is 44, two thirds of 44. Uh, and, but then, then I thought some, some people would not choose that. So, uh, <clears throat> I, I should have picked a bit higher, like 20, but uh, I picked 11, anyways. But I think the correct answer is uh, near zero. Okay, so you okay? So how come you started at 100 though? You thought everyone was going to pick 100? No, but but <clears throat> out of 100, uh, if everybody let's say pick 100, it'd be 100. The average would be like the maximum. I chose the maximum, so two thirds okay. of that would be 66, and then I go each level down. Okay. The, the maximum case is a hundred, right? Yeah. Like everybody okay. picked them. I like it. I like it, man. I like it. So you chose this low number. What was the number again? 10? 11. 11. 11. Okay. So you chose 11 because you thought, well, you know, most people are going to know that it's, you know, they're, they're going to start with Neil's level 33. Then they're going to go down to Steven's level, right? And they're going to be like, well, everyone's going to choose 21. So I think it's going to be 33% of that. <clears throat> yeah, something like that. But then, but then I stopped because I said, well, you know, at what point do you stop? Is it exactly. like one, zero? Right. So exactly. I'm thinking right. at least one or two people would, would not think, like would not, would just do uh, average or would pick a random yeah. number. So you have to account for that. 100%. 100%, right? And this is what we're going to talk about um, markets being efficient and also how this relates to stuff like Fibonacci lines, trend lines, support lines. Okay, we're going to, we're going to talk about all that. But Tico, good answer. Good answer, man. That's a really, that's a really good answer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we want, you want to say what the average was? So, yeah, I think before we do that, we should summarize what's really going on here. Okay. Right, so you want to do that? Yeah. So we all want, we're all playing this game and we're all playing to win. 
So we want to think critically. We want to think, and we're all thinking critically. We're not all of us, but you know, most the majority of people are thinking critically. They're trying to win. So for that reason, we start thinking, well, what is my opponent thinking? Right? That, that, that is the level that let's say Neil was on. Neil was thinking, well, what's my opponent thinking? He's probably thinking, you know, he's gonna pick a random number. Right? But then what Steve did was he's thinking, well, what does the opponent think I'm thinking? Right? And so in Neil's case, if he knew that his opponent thought he was gonna be 33, then he would have dropped his, his lower. And that's what Steve's, that's what Steve did. And then what Tico did was he took it one step further. He said, you know what? The average person here is pretty smart. So they're probably gonna drop it down to Steve's level. And I'm gonna come in at 66% of that. I'm gonna come in 33% lower. And that is what's happening, right? We are, people as a group are becoming, they're, they're, this is called um, the equilibrium, right? It's, it's coming to the point where everyone agrees and then you have to drop it down. So if we were in a room of computers, if we were in a room with, let's say, Harvard, Harvard yeah, grads who studied game theory for the last five years, the correct answer would be one. Why? Because everyone would drive that number down. Everyone would be thinking that, oh, it's, it, you know, it's going to be lower. It's going to be lower. It's going to be lower. Right. They're thinking way ahead. Now, the thing is, you know, and what some of you guys were doing was you are saying, well, guess what? We don't have Harvard game theorists in here. So there is likely to be people who will drive up the value of this number. And so that is where understanding who, who you're playing against is so important, right? It's not just, we can't just assume. So this would be assuming the market yeah, is efficient. efficient, perfectly efficient, right? Right. And it's not, the market is not perfectly efficient. There are a lot of smart people in the game, but it's not hundred percent efficient. Right. And that's where, you know, opportunity lies. So in our game example with all of us, the answer was actually 28, which I guess I'll say it. And this actually hurts me to say the, the winner of the game was Neil. Congrats, buddy. <laughs> really? <Five> away? <laughs> yeah, okay. man. So it was really the closest. So Neil is the closest with 33. Now, only Neil's calls paid off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, if we were, if we were, um, you know, if we played this game again, right, it would be one. The answer would be one. Yeah, if we played again, how, how would you guys deal with this now? Right? The safe play would be to pick one. Without even telling you, without even telling you one, one you guys would at least drop that number down to, let's say, three. Right? Because you became more efficient. You understood the game. Okay, so when we look at something, let me see, race this. Do the, is your race this one? Uh, I don't know where it went, dude. Ah, sneaky, sneaky eraser. So how does this, how does this relate to trading? How does this relate to trading? So, you know, good job, man. You're going to be portfolio manager uh, for next week. Even though I think it should go to Tico. I know, right? Tico, we'll give you a... Uh, Senior associate. <laughs> <laughs> Senior intern. Senior intern at the fund. <laughs> okay. Um, so if, let's say the stock trade, okay? Let's go like this. Okay, pay attention here, guys. It's really important. It's really important, okay? And now everybody sees this fill, this resistance, okay? The stock is trading right here. Everybody sees this resistance at 100. Now, guess what? There, imagine we're all playing this game, okay? We're all playing this game. Stock's trading right now at 97, okay? And you can only get one, there's only one fill. There's only room for one fill at 100. That's it, right? Remember, in the market- When we're all there, we all own shares. Yeah, we all own shares. In the market, there is not unlimited fills, right? People forget that we're playing a game. We're in a game. This 100 line, there has to be sellers here. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Who in their right mind is gonna sell here? Right, let's say I don't own, let's say, uh, sorry, who right in their right mind is gonna buy here? 
right? If you're going to be selling, someone has to be buying it, right? Who in their right mind is going to buy at a hundred? We all see this. So, but there's another thing that's going to happen here. First off, there shouldn't be any liquidity at hundred because no one's going to be buying. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if you know there's no liquidity at hundred, when are you going to, when are you going to start selling your shares? You're going to start selling them at 99 because you know, no one's going to buy at hundred, but you know, someone might buy it at 99. But we all know, but now we know like one step ahead, right? Well, what is my opponent thinking? Well, he's thinking he's going to sell at 99. So I'm going to get in one step before him. I'm going to get at 98 and I'm going to drive that liquidity. I'm going to, I'm going to capture that liquidity myself and then I'm out. But then we all know that and we drive it down, we drive it down, we drive it down to the current price today. Okay. And that is why this stuff like Fibonacci lines, technical analysis, these, you know, these, these charts here that are easy to see. Everybody can see this. Everybody. It was not going to make you money. This is going to make you money if no one can see it. If it's just you, if you have this four letter word, if you have an edge, if you have an advantage, you have no advantage here. You have what everyone else has. And so for that reason, today's price is going to reflect this. Remember in markets, markets are mostly efficient, meaning most of the time you have a lot of smart players that drive the volume. Okay. The guy trading Forex from his uh, mom's basement is not going to be able to push the markets anywhere. It's the bigger guys and they all see this. Okay. So in order for you to make money, you have to have an advantage over them. Okay. And that's why this edge is so, so important. What would you say to someone who says, well, <clears throat> what you're talking about here is like the one being the right answer in our other game. Yeah. But as we saw, when we played the game, the right answer was 28, meaning that not everyone's perfectly efficient. Not everyone is thoroughly versed with uh, game theory. What would you say to that person who says this will work because it's not actually as efficient as you think it is? Yeah. So I would say in most of the time it's efficient, right? Meaning there's a lot of smart people. So even if we took that game, for example, and we went into a room with, with uh, Yale graduates, the number would be maybe three, right? Representing a small edge. Okay, when you know the, the, the more efficient the market, right, the closer it gets to one. So what I would say is, um, I can't remember what I was going with this, but oh, fucking drew, drew a blank here. Okay, no, I'll, I'll, I can I yeah. can give an answer to that question how I would look at it. Um, I'll leave that there if you guys yeah. remember. Okay, here's what I would say to someone who says, but it's not perfectly efficient, right? And the reason I know that is. My buddy, uh, my buddy Johnny trades. Johnny's an idiot. <laughs> so this guy's like him there, right? This guy's like Johnny playing. Okay, well let's let's look at this, right? So we got we got Johnny. Oh, we actually got a guy named Johnny who just joined the academy. Nice. Johnny, for when you watch this back, I'm not talking about you. Don't worry. <laughs> and let's say Johnny has a bankroll of five thousand. Right? Let's say he's got a little nice little account for himself. He's, he's trading. He's doing all right. And let's say Johnny is level one. He doesn't really know much. He's, he's looking at the lines. He's enjoying it. He's having fun. We see where it goes. Then you have, let's call them, I don't know, Citadel. We'll call him Citadel, right? Well, Citadel's bankroll is, I don't know, what do you want to call it? hundred billion? Yeah. Just call it, yeah, we'll call it, we'll call it one bill. They have a billion dollar bankroll. Johnny is playing against Citadel. Imagine there was 10,000 Johnnies. What does that come out to? Like 50 mil, yeah. something like that? 50 mil or 500 mil, one of the two? It's about 50 mil. So now we have $1 billion of what we'll call level 10 thinking, the smartest quants in the world, right? PhDs, the smartest people, versus 50 mil of level one thinking. This is level one, this is level 10. Well, if we were to put them against each other now, what this basically means is there are like 20 times as many Citadels as there are Johnnies. So in that game, imagine if uh, Johnny picked, right? We, we played that game from before and Johnny picked um, 60. 
Let's say he did the level one thinking, he picked, he picked 60, 66. But then you had 20 people pick one. Well, all of a sudden the skew is, you're not getting that 28 number now. You're maybe getting three, you're maybe getting two. You're getting something a lot closer to the perfectly efficient answer, which means what we said before becomes accurate, which is they're mostly efficient. Most of the time it's efficient because the smart money is the ocean and our buddy Johnny is a, a semi -evapor evaporated drop of water, barely made it to the ground. That's actually, thank you. Uh, uh, that's actually, what you're trying to do. That's what I was, I was uh, right? trying to do. This market is most of the time efficient, very efficient. So you're not going to find these edges here. This is, you're not going to have an edge here, right? Because this is what the level one thinkers are looking at and they can't move the market, right? So what you need to do is go into a place where you become, um, what is it? You become, you become Citadel. Yeah. Right. Or you're, or you're, or you're on the same side as Citadel. Right. Or you're trading in a market where people are forced to do something. Mm -hmm. Example, forced to buy vol in certain regimes, right? Forced to buy vol um, around earnings, around earnings or Delta 10 S and P puts, right? Those are the situations where markets are forced to it, or there's a short squeeze. I was just talking to Steve about this. There's a short squeeze. Markets are rallying and people are forced to buy back their shares. And that's why sometimes you see stocks go up like this. And then the next day, after the short coverings are done, stock tanks, right? Because it goes back to fair value. Yet you have all these people, these all these uh, little Johnnies in here buying the breakouts, buying the breakouts, when fair value is five dollars, and the next day it drops back to fair value once all the short squeezers are gone, right? So that's why this stuff doesn't work. And people say all the time it's a self fulfilling prophecy, right? It's a self fulfilling prophecy. It's what we always hear. If everyone knows this is support. Well, why can't I, why can't I just follow everyone else? Right. And it's going to just happen on its own. No one is really thinking like this. The only people who are thinking like this is Johnny with, with $5,000 in his bank account. Citadel has no clue what, what's happening on the chart, right? I posted a thing in the group where it said, uh, all people were looking, um, his name's Chris. He used to work for Susquehanna, huge, um, uh, huge market maker. And he's basically said, uh, all I did was look at the numbers. I had no clue what the stock was. I had no clue about the lines. All I knew was the numbers. Yeah. A lot of the time, like I, I, I can't remember the last time I looked at a chart. There's no, there's no value there. There's no, there's no money for me in that chart. Mm -hmm. So why am I going to waste my time on? Right. Mm -hmm. Think about it, guys. Like, actually, I want some feedback from you guys. Knowing this stuff now, like, how do you feel about the game that we're playing? The reason we share this stuff is we have to remember that we are playing a game. Right. When you start a business, you can think of it as you're playing a game. When you're in the market, you're playing a game. Right, you know, you, you can break down a lot of things in life to the idea of it being a game. And what we're what we're covering here is some fundamentals of how games work, game theory. Right. So, how do you feel? Do you feel that you're uh, a little more knowledgeable about this field now? Um, you know, does it change the way you, you you're looking at the education that we provide or the way you look at the markets? I'd love to hear uh, your feedback. And Koa, we'll get to your question uh, right after this last part here. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, it makes sense. Cool. Yeah. So keep that in mind, guys, right? You, you got to have an edge and we have to understand who we're playing against as well. If we're playing, let's say, you know, in, in, in the Forex space, right? Where technical analysis is not even, the people don't even know about it outside of uh, retail trading outside of, then, you know, it doesn't exist. There's no self-fulfilling prophecy here. Okay. And people wouldn't be selling at a hundred if the, if the, if the big guy, has a billion dollars to sell at a hundred. He can't sell at a hundred. He can't sell a billion dollars at a hundred. Who's going to pick it up? Everyone sees this. So where does he start selling? At today's price. Exactly. Right. And it's the same when you think, Hey, you know what the stocks, uh, this stock is going to go up in the future because of battery day. Right. Well, guess what? Everyone thinks is everyone's already thinking about battery day. So what are people doing? It's being discounted in today's price. It's coming back, right? Here's Tesla on battery day at 1000 and it's coming back to today. And so the stock is going up to 1000 or maybe if it, you know, this is where some risk and confidence might come into play. And maybe it'll go up to 900 because maybe, you know, if it's at 500 today, maybe it goes up to 900 before battery day because, or now, because there's still that little bit of risk that the battery day news is nothing. There's still risk on that, right? Everyone knows it'll be great. So it'll price in high level of confidence which is why if you know differently, there's big money to be made.
Yeah. You, and that's where we say disagreement with the market is where money is made. Yep. So Marcos is saying sometimes I don't have confidence in the in the in the numbers on the terminal. So I like to look at uh, or until I compare it to the chart. The chart is how you get what he means. Right. So, um, so in, in your case, Marcos, right? You're you're scalping, right? So you you actually are taking a directional view almost all the time, right? You're hoping buy this buy this call now and ten minutes sell it because the stock's going to break out or something, right? That's I think majority of, of what's happening there. With the terminal, what we're really looking at is you're trying to screen for opportunities and then look at the option chain to make decisions, right? In your case, um, you, you really need to understand this, right? You really need to understand where, where is this coming from? Where is this coming from if everyone has this, okay? If everyone has a, uh, let's say, a PhD degree and they're all playing for Citadel, what is gonna distinguish someone from the other person, it's not going to be the PhD, right? It's going to be something else they did. And that's how we have to think about the markets. It's a competition and we can never forget that. We can never forget that there is someone who's saying to you, I see this resistance. I actually see it, right? Remember this and, and, and really, really try to understand what's going on here. You get this, okay? You get the little bit of a breakout here and you get a retest. Okay. Someone is looking you dead in the eye and telling you this. I disagree. I see this breakout. I see this pullback. I see the high volume. I'm going to sell it to you. I'm going to sell you this thing. And you're sitting there saying, I'm going to buy it. Now, if imagine I told you that, imagine before you made a trade Marcos and I knew exactly what you were going to do. You were going to buy because of this breakout. And I could, I could see it on my pattern. I could see it on my chart. And I turned to you, Marcos, and I said, hey, Marcos, I see that. I'm willing to sell it to you. And then when you look at me, I'm a quant at Citadel. How would that make you feel? Would you still be confident taking your trade? Right? And that's what, you know, when you ask someone that question, you know, it, I hope it makes, it makes some of you wonder, like, maybe sometimes I am on the wrong side of the trade. Right? Most of the time, the market is efficient. We need to find little edges that people are overlooking or that people are forced into, into doing something. And we can be on the other side of that. Okay. Exciting stuff. So guys, we're going to do a little Q and a now I'm going to wrap up the, the recording here. That's the end of this session. Uh, if you stick around, if you have any questions or you want to hear the responses um, to the questions people ask.